why do you think there's this generalized culture of anti children and family creation at the moment? I wonder where that's stemming from. I do think it's a sad reality. I don't know where that's coming from. I just think the reality is there's so many alternatives to having kids now. You can travel, you can really become something. If you want to become famous, you can become famous, you can travel the world, you can make a lot of money, you can do all of these things. But, you know, if you speak to people who have even, you know, scored goals in the World Cup, they'll still tell you that the best moment of their life is when their child is born. So I think it's a really negative thing to place, um, to kind of put on society. I think the reality is when you know that you're going to have kids you have to take more responsibility of your life you have to save more money you have to look after your health it gives you a will to live now to remove that from you is that is a slow and steady self-sabotage when you don't have any children for the rest of your life and you think you're never going to have them essentially you could be a car wreck and no one's going to watch you whereas when you have children it's an automatic therapy you have to fix your traumas you have to fix your self-sabotaging behaviors so you're depriving yourself of reaching your full potential when you completely write that off I, I believe, but I could be wrong with that. I, you are preaching to the choir. I think yeah. that it, it's really great. All of my friends that have become fathers, they've stepped up in a way that I, I'm impressed by. Like they yeah. were, they were hitters before, and they're even bigger hitters now. Yeah. Which is why it surprises me that there is this generalized anti-children, anti-family creation culture. It's really good. Like sometimes, you know, and they even do it with men that are in like, you know, uh, in trouble with the law and stuff. Sometimes when they have children, it's the only way to get them off the streets because it's the only thing that gives them that mo motivation that they can't find outside of it. But So if you are feeling that, maybe it's uh, you need to have a kid. Down, have a kid. <laughs> well, I, I understand what you mean as well, that there is this kind of mass individualism. Mm. Um, I think that some of the most common reasons as to why people aren't getting into relationships at the moment, uh, working on myself right now, just don't feel ready, yeah. uh, sort of biding my time, so to speak. Super childish though. It's just, mm. a, it's a focus on the individual mm. um, and it's very isolationist. It's very atomized. Mm -hmm. It's all about the individual on their own. And I, don't get me wrong, you know, if you Spend your time, maybe you're work from, working from home post-COVID. Yeah. Um, maybe your job doesn't actually require you to interact with that many other people, or maybe you're all doing it all through Slack and through Zoom. Mm -hmm. You don't need to really leave the house that much anymore. You can door dash your food. Mm -hmm. You can Amazon Prime, whatever it is that you need. You can stay on the couch and watch Netflix. Yeah. Uh, we've become more isolated, and I think that that trend almost causes us to justify more isolationism. Yeah. Uh, and... It also, it's called extended adolescence or slow mm -hmm. life strategy yeah. that Gene Twangy found. And this is just never really getting to the stage of growing up. You know, young people are getting their driver's licenses later. They're starting work later. They're moving oh. out of the house later. Mm -hmm. Like the most common living arrangement for men under the age of 30 is still being at home with their parents. Yeah, and this is one of the things I, I you know, I get a lot of slack on for online because I talk a lot about age gaps. And sometimes young women, you know, they go for older men and they'll say, yeah, but he's 40. I know I'm only 22, but at least he'll be more responsible and he will settle down. Responsibility, well, maturity is not defined by age. It's defined by how much responsibility he had. And I always say, if he's got to 40, no kids, no marriage under his belt, he's chosen that Peter Pan lifestyle. No 23 year old is going to come along and wake him up. He's chosen to be that man. Are you sure you want to be with him? You're better off with a 30 year old that's got more responsibility than a 45 year old who hasn't. Because if you think a number defines maturity, you're lost. The reality is, it's the amount of responsibility, particularly responsibility and care for others. So if he's supporting family, if he's supporting a, an ex-wife or he was married or he had had kids it does something to men it kind of it creates a, a, a level of responsibility and accountability that they can't get without that so I do always tell women um, don't be afraid of being with a man that's had kids or a man that's uh, you know been married they're better than the ones that have had no baggage because baggage is responsibility which is then accountability for a man. Do you think the, the same is true in reverse? No, unfortunately. It doesn't work the same way with women. Not always. It can sometimes, but it doesn't always work the same way because women, when they have children, and good women with healthy women, actually prioritize the children first and foremost. And if she does, uh, uh, one of the priorities is becoming then super cautious of the man that she allows to enter into the man's world. And her, if she's a really good mother, she tends to keep a good co-parenting relationship with the ex and a lot of 
men don't feel comfortable with that. But the true good woman, like the single mom that you should be looking for, is the one that's got a good relationship with her ex-husband. What men do is they prefer the woman that has no contact with the ex and the kids have never seen the ex. And they think, oh, I'll go for that girl. At least the ex baby father is not around. That's a signal that she deprives or prevents children from connecting with their father. That's not a good thing. That's not a green flag. That's actually a red flag. So what men are doing is sometimes they're selecting women and thinking she's got children, but she she doesn't let the kids see their dad and they're not in his life and he was a bum. But what does that tell you about her selection process and what does that tell you about her ability to co-parent? It's an insight into what would happen if you two broke up. You won't exist for those children. That's not a healthy mother. A healthy mother is who cheated on me, who was awful, who was a wreck, but the kids need their father. I drop him every Friday. That's the healthy mother. But men don't interpret single motherhood the way they should. Yeah. Do you have any idea how fatherlessness impacts boys and girls' behavior and yeah. what they what they look for when they grow up and start dating? Um, with women, they definitely, here's the problem women have when they grow up without a father figure and it, they really feel it, is they'll always date a lot older men. So they'll be 17, 18 years old and they're looking at the 30-year-old and the 35-year-old and they're getting older and older and there's a huge gap between them. Now, in my experience of working with women that go for these age gap relationships is they are in survival mode without a father. They need that safety and comfort. And the conversations that we normally find really boring coming from our father about mortgage rates and like, you know, saving your money, they sexualize those conversations. So when they hear it from an older man, they're like, oh, well, he's so responsible. It's they're not used to it. So they end up initially going for that older man and falling in love. But once they feel safe and they've got the money and they've got the safety, they then look for men around their own age. They end up, it's like, it's almost like having a safe, secure base. Once you've got an older father figure in your life, then you go on to see what you're sexually attracted to. But until you've got that secure base, you're in survival mode. You're looking for who can make you feel safe, not who can make you feel who you're attracted to. So they confuse, they blur the lines between attraction and safety. And they end up looking for it in an older man, but then cheating on him with a younger man. Do you think that they over prioritize? socioeconomic status yeah. in that regard? Rightly so. I understand why, because they don't have a backup plan. When you grow up with your father, you know at some point he'll help you when things get rough or he'll leave something for you and stuff and it naturally creates a level of safety. They don't have that safety and usually they, if they come from a single mom home, she's also encouraging her to look for a rich man because it benefits her as well. Yeah, There's usually some kind of like support network, okay, you can come live with us and so on and so forth. So they come from a culture of, you know, you don't have to love a man. All men are annoying and they're difficult. So just choose one that's going to give you a good life. So they end up focusing on social economic status, but they also end up with men with low self-esteem because a man with high self-esteem at 40 years old would recognize he's got nothing in common with a 22-year-old who makes TikToks all day. He wouldn't have any intellectual intimacy. So she ends up with an older man with low self-esteem who when she does cheat on him will still take her back and so on and so forth who, uh, who pays every bill or whatever it is she, so she, again she ends up with a man that she doesn't respect in the long run but really admires initially because he provides her with that safety she's been craving yeah you you told me about this book you'd been reading to do with parental alienation mm. what's that well the thing is I was looking into parental alienation only because I see it so much going on but one of the things um, punishments women use for a man that's be, that she feels has let her down is depriving her uh, him of access to the children now the problem I see happening is with the children of such mothers especially the men of such mothers they go on to have very very abusive relationships so men who grow up with single moms who blocked access they end up with women who are very abusive. Either they're unfaithful or they financially abuse them or they're just, uh, they're physically abusive. They grow up with very, they end up selecting very abusive uh, women. And from my observation and from what I'm reading, it looks like what happens is when you've been deprived of a father and you've only heard mum's side of the story, what happens is they put their mum on a pedestal. They think mum's women are the innocent victims of harsh men. So what will happen is they're prey to women that need saving. They always gravitate towards women that they can save and help and nurture and say, oh yeah, that man was terrible. I've got you. I'm going to help you. I'm going to show you what life looks like because I've been doing that to mum my whole life. The problem with those women is they are broken beyond you. You can't fix them. Most women can't be saved. They they have an, uh, something broken that they need to fix it themselves. But the man that thinks he can save her is the one that's a little bit more delusional. And he gets his self-esteem from seeing her now love him. So unfortunately, he ends up going for very broken women that end up 
re-abusing him and he uh, he ends up not having those boundaries that he needs with women so they end up in very poor relationships when they've been raised by a mother that blocks access to fathers you often hear about the reverse mm -hmm. about women who look for the guy that's broken but i can fix him and i can yeah. hold on why do you think that happens we, we hear it a lot with women it happens in men as well we hear it a lot in women because it's a huge ego boost knowing that a man used to be a player but for you he changed or he used to be in and out of jail but for you he changed here's the reality you're competing with people's childhood not other women if i've got a man that's really broken and he sleeps around and he's doing drugs or whatever it is and i think i'm going to fix him and i'm going to be the special person i'm competing with his childhood traumas you can't compete with some Somebody's childhood. Essentially, you're always going to lose. Now, whatever caused that addictive behavior or that abusive behavior still exists before you. You are not the therapist and you are not the cause of the wound. So don't take on that role. You're not only going to hurt yourself. The best thing you can do is support them while they heal it. But to attribute his healing to you as a person is a form of narcissism. You're wanting to feel good by his healing, not for the sake of him healing, but for you to get an ego boost to know that you could do it. And it's not the way to do it. We'll get back to talking to Sadhya in one minute. But first, I need to tell you about Element. Stop having coffee first thing in the morning. Your adenosine system that caffeine acts on isn't even active for the first 90 minutes of the day. But your adrenal system is and salt acts on your adrenal system. Element contains a science-backed electrolyte ratio of sodium and potassium and magnesium that plays a critical role in reducing muscle cramps and fatigue whilst optimizing brain health and regulating your appetite. They are the exclusive hydration partner to Team USA weightlifting and relied on by tons of elite athletes around the world. Best of all, they have a no BS, no questions asked refund policy so you can buy it and try it all. And if you do not like it for any reason, they will give you your money back and you don't even need to return the box. That's how confident they are that you love it. Head to the link in the description below or go to drinklmnt.com slash modernwisdom to get a free sample pack of all eight flavors with your first box. That's drinklmnt.com slash modernwisdom. What's happening, people? If you enjoyed that, then press here for the full unedited episode. And don't forget to subscribe.